Well, good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, December 30th. Happy Thursday. Uh, what are we, two days away? Is it Let's two see, days? New Year's Eve tomorrow. So is that a day and a half? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Sounds Thanks for good. keeping me in line. This week has been a kind of a, a blur for We're most of us. We're still in kind of a funk, and we know some of you are too. Uh, Mike is back from Christmas break, joins us now as we go outside with live cam. Good to see some bright sunshine, but you're still tracking a pretty potent front on the horizon. Yeah, and, and also short term, a little bit of fog. And if you want to get really fancy, Sarah, yes. uh -huh. you say that this is the uh, penultimate day of the year. Okay. Tomorrow's the ultimate day of the year, the last. So right. it's the second to last. The so. ultimate. Am I saying that right? This yes. is part of Mike's SAT prep program. Yesterday was the antepenultimate day of the year. So anyway. Thank you. Um, the lesson. This is just kind of, yeah. So <laughs> we have what temperature we right now. 62 degrees. So we're actually closer to the normal high temperature than, of course, the uh, normal low, which is in the low 40s right now. And humidity is at 75%. That dew point is at 54, which, yeah, we had that dry air move in yesterday. But relative to some of the temperatures, very high humidity. We're going to make it up to uh, 78 at 3 o'clock and then get up to 80 later on this afternoon. And as far as the allergens and the aquifer, the aquifer went up 17 of a foot in the past 24 hours and mountain cedar went up from yesterday's reading. It's going to be interesting with that big front moving through here on Saturday to see what that mountain cedar does by Sunday's count. And as far as fog, we are still dealing with some of it, a little bit around Randolph. Some is being reported around New Braunfels, reduced visibility. You Valley had a lot of thick fog about an uh, hour or so ago. Now that has definitely improved. Boy, I'll tell you what, down there along the coastal plain, it is still very thick, very soupy. And we still have the dense fog advisory in effect up until 10 o'clock this morning for our southeastern counties. It's going to be cold. As a matter of fact, well, a couple of counties have been deleted from that. Still a few in our eastern uh, counties, though, and that's in effect once again up until 10 o'clock. We are looking at the first freeze of the season here in town. That's coming up in just a couple of minutes. Thank you, Michael. Let's look at Transcad real quick. Light traffic out there. There's uh, Loop 410 at Starcrest right now. Also equally in light traffic, Loop 410 at Evers. That's good to see. All right, let's take a look at today's 9 at 9. New cases of COVID-19 in the U.S. have soared to their highest level on record at over 265,000 per day on average. The surge has been driven largely by the highly contagious Omicron variant. The previous mark was 250,000 cases per day. With New Year's Eve approaching, Dr. Anthony Fauci says there's no need to cancel small home gatherings among vaccinated and boosted family and friends, but he is strongly recommending against larger gatherings. Hospitals are bearing the weight of it all, treating and testing as the country faces a shortage of COVID-19 tests. The FDA authorized two new over-the-counter at-home tests for emergency use, but a number of states have called up the National Guard to help with the strain, including Georgia, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Ohio. Studies show the Pfizer booster shot, in addition to the two doses of the Pfizer COVID vaccine, could protect you better against Omicron. A team at Israel's Ministry of Health looked at the blood from vaccinated volunteers, comparing Omicron infected cells after two doses and then three. But the studies also showed that even with three doses of the vaccine, Omicron was still more threatening compared to Delta. British socialite Ghislaine Maxwell has been convicted of helping to lure teenage girls to be sexually abused by the late Jeffrey Epstein. The verdict announced yesterday capped off a month-long trial. Jurors deliberated for five full days before finding Maxwell guilty of every count except one. She faces years in prison. Dallas area police have charged a 14 year old with capital murder in a triple killing at a gas station and are warning that the boy is armed at large and dangerous. Detectives in Garland are looking for Abel Elias Acosta and said they have evidence showing he was the gunman who left three teens dead and injured a fourth at a convenience store Sunday. Investors are pointing to reasons for optimism in the new year, many expecting the economy to continue its recovery. This as two market indexes set new records yesterday. The S&P 500 gaining 0.1% for its 70th record close of the year. The Dow Jones Industrials edging up 0.2% for its sixth straight gain. 
Extended holiday return policies may wind up hurting major U.S. retailers. Many began Christmas promotions as early as September in the face of the pandemic with low inventories due to supply chain problems. And shoppers may be bringing back a record $112 billion in gifts, which can hurt companies' bottom lines. Apple, Nordstrom, Nike, and Walmart among retailers lengthening return windows this year, some by as much as three months. No winners in the Powerball drawing last night, which means the jackpot has grown to a whopping $483 million. Yesterday was the final Powerball drawing of the year. The numbers were 2, 6, 9, 33, 39, and the Powerball 11. The next drawing is Saturday, New Year's Day. The Oklahoma Sooners won the Valero Alba Bowl last night against the Oregon Ducks, 47 to 32. This is career win number 191 for coach Bob Stoops. The Sooners took the lead early in the game, but the Ducks did try to fight back. It just wasn't enough to get the win in what turned out to be a great game here in San Antonio. That is today's nine at night. Other top stories we're following for you today right here at KSAT 12. Search efforts continue today for 3 Olina Kill. She's been missing for 10 days now. She was last seen on December 20th at the Villas del Cabo apartment complex on Fredericksburg Road near Warsbach. San Antonio Police Chief William McManus says they have no evidence that anyone took Lena, so they are treating this as a missing persons case, not an abduction. Anyone with information about her disappearance is asked to call SAPD's missing person unit at 210-207-7660. A fire at a Northwest Side restaurant last night. Happened at Jerusalem Grill on Wurzbach, right there near I-10. Firefighters got a call around 11 o'clock last night. When they arrived on scene, they saw heavy smoke coming from the back of the restaurant and flames coming through the roof. They say the fire started in an AC unit and spread to the attic. It's unclear how much uh, the damage estimate will be so far. A deadly shooting downtown overnight. And police are still searching for the person responsible. This happened around 1230 this morning near Market Street and South Alamo Street. Police say a man, the man that was shot in the upper torso and died from the injury. A sergeant on scene said the suspect jumped down to the river walk and ran away. At last check, officers were still looking for that person. The man killed has not been identified. And a silver alert discontinued for a man in our area. The Bear County Sheriff's Office was searching for 81 year old John Lamb, but the silver alert was discontinued just before we came on air. We have no other information on this case. So far in your morning headlines, COVID cases in China on the rise, but uh, not like here they are in the US, US rather. And a tiger shot after a man gets his arm in the enclosure. A self-driving truck could be the answer to supply chain problems and a relationship between coffee and dark chocolate. David Sears is here. Good morning, David. Hi, David. Good morning. How long has it been since we had a, a coffee study? couple days, maybe uh, at least a week or two. Is there nothing I, else these people can do no, is to study I, coffee? I, I love the coffee studies. Keep them okay. coming. All right. Well, we've got this one for you. We'll have that in just a second. So hold on. It's coming. But first, let's start overseas in China. Some interesting COVID numbers have been released. The mainland of China is reporting 207 new cases, 156 transmitted locally, 51 imported. The city of Jing is experiencing the biggest increase in cases, 155. They have been over 150 for five straight days. Their current outbreak is 1,117 cases in a city of 13 million. Authorities say the daily case number will start to decline since there has now been four rounds of testing. The Chinese mainland reported 207 new cases yesterday. All right, let's move on to the next one in your morning headlines. Let's uh, move on. Wait, hold on. We'll get this. We'll get this right in just a second. There we go. An endangered tiger has been shot and killed in his enclosure in the Naples Zoo in Florida. The tiger was shot after a member of the maintenance crew climbed a fence into an unauthorized area and then tried to feed or pet the animal. They're not sure which one. It all happened after hours. The animal grabbed the man's arm and then wouldn't let go until a deputy came up and shot it. The man was a member of the cleaning crew hired by the zoo, was not authorized to clean the animal enclosure. He was taken to the hospital by helicopter. The tiger, eight years old, name was Eco. Malayan tigers endangered. They are threatened by poachers and loss of their habitat. There are less than 200 like Eco remaining in the wild. All right, now you're on board an 18 wheeler. Yep, your eyes don't deceive you. Look, mom, no hands. That is a self driving semi truck. Chen Lu is the CEO of the company that designed the truck called Too Simple. 
They did a driverless test that drove from Tucson to Phoenix, terminal to terminal. They even had an unmarked law enforcement vehicle following behind about a half mile back. The truck made it. The CEO says this could ultimately help the supply chain issues we're dealing with. The only way you can create new freight capacity to solve the supply chain constraints is to uh, not have drivers. Today is a major step towards that. Yeah, the company already has 70 semis that have rolled up about a million miles so far. Another health study when it comes to coffee, Sarah. Researchers found, I don't, and I, this one's confusing. Researchers <laughs> found people who have genes that predispose them to faster metabolism of caffeine probably like coffee with nothing in it, and they like dark chocolate. Dark chocolate has caffeine and caffeine-related stimulant. The authors of the study believe that folks tie caffeine's bitterness to an increase in mental alertness that they feel and that they want. When people think about caffeine, they think about bitter taste, so they enjoy black coffee and dark chocolate. The study's in the journal Scientific Reports. So I, I guess there's a relationship between black coffee and dark chocolate if you have a certain... If you have a faster metabolism, you like your coffee black and you like dark, dark chocolate. chocolate. If you have a slower metabolism, like myself, you like extra cream and milk chocolate. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Do we still get to eat chocolate and, dr and drink coffee? I, I don't know. Okay, I don't either. I'm not, chocolate sure. I'm not real clear. Coffee. Yeah. I think chocolate, I mean, uh, coffee and <laughs> wine and are the, like the two most studied foods. Because they're the best ones. <laughs> like, I don't need water. I just need coffee and wine. Good to go. I'm Chocolate learning on the side. so much today. <laughs> wow. David Sears, thank you. Sounds like a New Year's for her. I know, right? <laughs> Time New Year's Eve. Resolutions coming. made and celebrated. There you go. 909, about 62 degrees, still ahead on GMSA at 9. If you are looking for a positive way to start the new year, giving back could be an option. Coming up, how you can help seniors in San Antonio. With 2022 right around the corner, many are thinking about positive ways to start out the new year, including giving back and volunteering. Meals on Wheels is one organization that is looking for volunteers. They get ready to hold one of its biggest delivery events in January to help seniors. Our Tiffany Huertas joins us live from Meals on Wheels San Antonio with more on ways people can get involved next year. Good morning and early happy new year, Tiffany. Happy New Year, Mark and Sarah. Yeah, Meals on Wheels does so much for our community on a daily basis, but this is going to be extremely important next year. They're going to be delivering these kits right behind me. These are going to be the winter storm kits for seniors in our community. There's going to be box juices, non-perishable food items, and to help seniors in our community on a daily basis, it takes lots of staff and volunteers. And to talk a little bit more about that, we have Ariana here with Meals on Wheels San Antonio. Good morning. Talk to Good us morning. about the these volunteers and the role that they play on a daily basis. Good morning, yes, thank you. The volunteers who deliver meals with us, it's more than a meal. They are providing a social contact for the people that they're seeing every day. The person who's delivering a meal might be the only person that a senior sees on a day-to-day -day basis. And right now we're not able to see them every day because uh, we don't have the volunteers we need for daily meal delivery. And we really, really wanna get back to that. And in January, we'll also be delivering those meal kits, as you described. And what's exciting about that is we want to make sure that they're ready for another winter event like we had last year. So we deliver the shelf-stable meals um, quarterly, but this time we'll be delivering a five-pack just in case. We want everyone that we serve to be ready because it's about them being safe and comfortable and nourished and independent in their own homes. So if I want to become a volunteer, what exactly are the options that I have here at Meals on Wheels? So um, at Meals on Wheels, there's um, volunteer opportunities for the animals of the clients that we serve. But um, really the main, the main opportunity that's available is the meal delivery. We are delivering meals Monday through Friday to our clients. And we want to be getting back to delivering hot meals on a daily basis because uh, um, we hadn't been doing that because of COVID. But um, so delivering a meal means you come through, you don't even have to get out of your car. We put everything in your car for you. We give you the sheet that tells you where you need to go. You go, you knock on people's doors, you make them smile, you get to smile at yourself, and then you're done and you get to go about the rest of your day. And it's, it's just a really awesome thing that you can't really necessarily appreciate until you've done it. So we encourage everyone to at least try it. 
um, try it out because it's a lot of fun and it's a great way to see the city as well. And you mentioned some shocking numbers. There's so many more volunteers that we need, hundreds more. Can you yes. talk to us about that? Yes, we need hundreds of more volunteers. Right now we're delivering about, uh, to about maybe 2,000 seniors a day, but regularly we would be delivering to uh, over 4,500 a day. And so when we go back to five a day with hot meals, we're going to need probably three or 400 volunteers to come through and help deliver those meals. We have staff who helps deliver, but the volunteers really make it possible. They make it possible for us to deliver fresher food at lower cost so we can reach more people. And as more people need services and realize services are available, that means we need more <laughs> volunteers. <laughs> so we just, we can't do it without the community support all around and those volunteers. They often find that like it, it's really meaningful for them, yeah. and and that's why we have some who can come back over and over again. Um, but even if it's once a month that you're coming and you're delivering a meal, it makes a world of difference to us and to the people that you're serving. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I know we have a lot more. We're going to hear from volunteers later today in our noon newscast, and we'll bring it back to you guys in studio right now. Thank you, Tiffany. Mike Osterhage joined us now thinking ahead to New Year's weekend. You guys make anything special food wise for New Year's, Mike? Um, my wife likes it when I make, she wants me to make chocolate souffles. Okay. And then um, I found a recipe years ago and it's you take little tiny buttermilk pancakes, make them little blini to call them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you put a little bit of sour cream on that, Ooh. chopped hard boiled egg, yeah. chopped uh, scallion, a little thing of just some uh, inexpensive caviar, and drizzle it with browned butter. Oh, good Lord, So what Mike. do you call that? Uh, mm. Saturday. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I found it in a uh, recipe in a magazine years ago. And it, it's funny because you think of all the different flavors, but you get the, the creaminess and the sour, the sour cream, the great nutty flavor, the browned butter. I'll so. think about that as I'm opening my, my single can of black eyed peas on Saturday. Oh, Stop it. This is for Friday night. <laughs> okay, gotcha. New Year's gotcha. Eve, not for Saturday. So, okay. all right. Yeah. Well, it sounds amazing. Yeah, it's, it's kind of tasty. So, yeah, a little Great labor intensive. Little labor yeah. intensive. But Save what the heck, up. you know? Yes, chef. Thank you, chef. <laughs> anyway, all right. Uh, this is a great looking picture. I love this shot. This is from uh, one of our uh, regulars, Yvonne. And yeah, the past couple of mornings make for some great pictures there. The sun trying to squeeze through the fogginess in the tree. It's a great shot. Thank you very much for that. All right. Beautiful view out there right now. A little bit of fuzz along the horizon. Now, as far as the dense fog advisory for most of our area, it has been canceled well down to the southeast. Still in effect down around Beeville, uh, Live Oak County up until 11 o'clock. That was extended. This is coming out of the Corpus Christi Weather Service office. Now, in and around town, Randolph, though, has dropped down to three miles visibility for Pleasanton. A little bit around New Braunfels. Head out to the east. You run into a lot more fog. Victoria, Corpus Christi. Beeville is doing okay for right now. Couture some fog and then also going down 35 in toward Laredo, a little bit of fog. So we're still going to deal with some of this for probably the next couple of hours at least. 62 right now. We only dropped to the upper 50s earlier this morning. The normal average low temperature, and by the way, this is the coolest time of the year historically, uh, is, should be in the low 40s. So we're well above that by, well, we were above that by about a good 15 degrees or so. The humidity, now the numbers are still below 60. So it's comfortable out there. Of course, yesterday morning, we started off and we had a lot of humidity around here. Things dried out in the afternoon and that dry air stayed in place overnight. Of course, temperatures dropped down to meet those dew points and that's why we did get some fog around here. However, these numbers are going to be coming up throughout the afternoon, so it is going to be a muggy afternoon and going into tonight and with 80 degrees. Yep, it's definitely going to feel kind of summery out there. And then tomorrow morning we're going to have a lot of humidity hanging around, so we'll have a lot of fog. We'll have some mist to deal with tomorrow and that humidity is going to be sticking around throughout the day. So last day of 2021 is definitely going to be warm. It is definitely going to be humid. We are going to be starting off on the humid side on Saturday and then some of that drier air and much colder air will come on in here. It's going to be kind of a one two punch. We get the dry air coming in here first. First, then the cold air will follow in behind that. So humidity will drop down throughout the afternoon on Saturday. We'll still be on the hot side, still getting up into the low 80s. That dry air heats up a lot more easily than the moist air does. Then this colder air is going to come on in here. Now we're not going to be getting down to zero or anything like that, but we are looking at some of the coldest air of the season. 
This is just for Sunday morning down to 35 degrees. We're looking at some 20s. Pretty good freeze in portions of the hill country. Then the really cold air is going to be settling on in here by Monday morning. So Monday morning we're looking at a confidence is pretty high. We're looking at our first freeze in San Antonio of this season. 75 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies and then a high temperature today. We're going to make it up to 80. And it's going to be a nice humid 80 and again, partly cloudy skies kind of going back and forth with the, the clouds out there tomorrow. A very sultry start because that humidity comes back into the picture. So we'll be right around 60. We'll have some fog, some mist around the area, and then we get up to 80 in the afternoon. It's going to be a, a muggy night tomorrow night if you are heading on out. And then Saturday, we're probably going to be starting off with a little bit of fog and mist again. Dry air comes in here. First of all, it's going to be windy on Saturday. Then the cold air comes on in 53. That's it for a high Sunday. So high Sunday is going to be about eh, call it 10 degrees cooler than what it is right now. <laughs> and then 29 to start off on Monday. What's also going to be interesting is with that front on Saturday, mm -hmm. what that does to Mount Cedar. Yeah, because it went up so. today, even from yesterday, and then you get the big front moving on. Yeah, we're no years, experts, so. but it's not looking good next week. My nose is no. tickling just mm -hmm. thinking yes. about it. Thank you very much, Mike. Right now, 922, about 62 degrees. Coming up next on GMSA at 9, a look at the new film, The Lost Daughter, and other news from Hollywood. This SA Salute holiday greeting is brought to you by the Republic of Texas Window Company. I'm Hunter Townsend with the Republic of Texas Window Company. And me and my son Xander would like to wish the veterans and first responders a happy holidays. Happy holidays! In the spotlight, Academy Award winner Olivia Coleman is a favorite for another Oscar nomination for her latest film, a psychological drama set on a Greek island. CNN's David Daniel gives us a look. Children are a crushing responsibility. Happy birthday. Olivia Coleman and Dakota Johnson star in The Lost Daughter about early motherhood, choices, and consequences. Your mommy's a girl. You're my big girl. She's driving me crazy. What were your daughters like when they were little? Each is hiding secrets from the other and the world. I don't think later. I think I knew. I think I think yeah. she sees her immediately. And I think that's why that's why there's this pull between them. The Lost Daughter is the screenwriting and directing debut of actress Maggie Gyllenhaal. Maggie wrote a beautiful script, which was was easy to follow because she did it so well. I love acting, and I've loved my life as an actress. Um, but I do look back and think, like, I was always butting up against something. Like, I wanted to break a wall down. Co-star Peter Sarsgaard, Hall's husband, says he was delighted to have a front row seat. She's the type of actor where it's clear, very clear that she could be a director because of the way that she both can see the shape of a scene, the point of a scene, its necessity, and the room around it, which is what you need to see as an actor. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Well, The Lost Daughter is now playing in limited release and debuts tomorrow on Netflix. There's much more ahead on GMSA at 9. Including a man who decided to blow up his car after getting a pricey repair bill. You won't want to miss this explosive story. And a local film director highlighting the issue of deportation in a new documentary why he says this topic was so important to him. Coming up next. A San Antonio documentary film director receiving recognition after tackling the tough subject of deportation. It is called Dial Home. The director tells Courtney Freeman why he chose to capture the loneliness and reality of deportation. People feeling like they don't belong anywhere. No problem, ma'am. Is there anything else I can go ahead and do for you, ma'am? We do apologize for the inconvenience this is causing you. I'll be definitely be able to look into your account. This is a short documentary film called Dial Home, directed by 27-year-old San Antonio native Cesar Martinez Barba. It highlights people who spend their lives living in America who then get deported to Mexico. We're not from here. We don't speak good Spanish. We're not from over there because we're Mexicans. There's a lot of people who are just caught right in between. And it's not because we chose to. <laughs> Often the only jobs they're suited for are at call centers. People are working in a job where they're speaking in English on the phone every day, 
with people um, in the country that they used to live in, yet they are in Mexico um, trying to rebuild their lives. Dial Home is screened at many film festivals, including the San Francisco International Film Festival, where it won Best Documentary Short Film, making it Oscar eligible. It was picked up by The New Yorker in September, which is showing the documentary for free online. Martinez Barba is honored, but values one thing the most. That this story is more available to more people and that there's a greater visibility lent to the subject matter. He credits his childhood in San Antonio, specifically his mentors at CC, for inspiring his love of filmmaking. I'm Mexican-American and I'm interested in telling Mexican-American stories. And this, for me, is another example of, of how complicated that identity can be. I think it was really important for me to honor um, that experience and the place that I come from. Future projects already in the works will continue championing Mexican-American stories. We are here for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. <coughs> you can look outside with live cam, 932, 64 degrees. There's a little bit of haze out there. Is that is that that fog, that light fog that's been kind of lingering around, or am I just seeing things? I no, might... it, it, there's a little bit of fog out there, okay. and it's funny because you know, despite the fact that you know we had fog the past couple of mornings, and then uh, dry air moved in late yesterday, but temperatures had dropped down. So relatively speaking, we had a lot of uh, some higher humidity this morning. And yeah, still a little bit of that fog out there. All right, let's just jump ahead. And tomorrow it's going to be very humid. We'll have a high temperature of 80. It stays pretty humid even into uh, the evening for New Year's Eve celebrations. We start off about 60 then the new year and probably going to have some fog and mist around again, not only tomorrow morning, but Saturday morning. Then kind of a one two um, situation here one two punch we get less humid air coming in here very windy conditions on saturday still a high temperature of 82 but then the colder air is going to follow behind that three miles visibility right now at randolph for pleasanton a lot of fog down there along the coastal plain and we still have a dense fog advisory for uh, way down along the coastal plain live oak uh, b counties are included in that for the next uh, hour and a half to 11 o'clock warm and humid today Warm and humid tomorrow. Like I said, more morning fog and New Year's Day. We dry out windy and then get ready. Much colder Sunday and we're looking at our first freeze Monday. Details coming up. Thank you, Mike. Well, we've all dealt with unexpected car repairs and they can be frustrating. But one driver got so mad he decided to blow up his Tesla rather than get it fixed. See, this Sheenie Mose has the explosive story. Ever get so mad at repair bills that you wanted to blow up your car? Me neither. But this Finnish guy was beyond finished with his 2013 Tesla Model S after he says he got an estimate of over $22,000 to replace his battery. Tomas Katainen was asked which would be better, a working Tesla or 66 pounds of dynamite exploding? No, periaatsa kumpaakin, mutta enempi ehkä räjäyttää. <laughs> Tomas went to the bomb dudes in Finnish, Poma Jatkit, a YouTube channel known for blowing things up. Tomas didn't have to pay. The bomb dudes used volunteers to rig the car with dynamite. Tomas bought the 2013 Tesla used about a year and a half ago. Even choppered in a dummy meant to resemble Elon Musk. <laughs> to take that final ride, Tomas got to push the button. <laughs> the explosion at a former quarry was captured from every angle. The video exploded on the internet with one poster asking Elon Musk, could you get him a new one, please? CNN asked Tesla for comment, but got no response. This isn't the first Tesla to be blasted. SpaceX launched a rocket which released a Tesla Roadster with Starman at the wheel. They're still orbiting the sun, made on Earth by humans. Well, this Tesla was exploded on Earth by humans. Cinemos. CNN, New York.
Okay, so according to Tesla, the standard warranty on a Model S covers eight years or 150,000 miles, but may be voided if the battery is open or serviced by anyone not authorized by Tesla. In your tech news, the popular Battle Royale game was offline for hours yesterday. Its creators said it was addressing stability issues during that time. The company was able to bring the servers back online later in the day. And we're talking about Fortnite, yes, aren't we? Yes, Fortnite. Right? Yes, that's yeah. what it is. Okay, and Marvel is dominating the list of this year's most pirated shows. WandaVision took the number one spot as the most illegally downloaded TV show. Fellow Disney Plus favorites also made the top five, including Loki and the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Well, this year's been filled with lots of ups and downs, not only in South Texas, but the entire nation. From COVID-19 vaccines to the February freeze to Fiesta making a return, a lot has happened this year. Here's a look back at what we've been through over the past 12 months. Procedure and decorum in Congress shattered today when a peaceful protest turned into a siege. Let's have trial by combat. We're going to walk down to the Capitol. This way. The Capitol went into lockdown with members of Congress inside. A Universal City man facing charges in connection with the breach at the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. 52-year-old Stephen Capuccio. Good morning, everyone. It's a winter wonderland out there. It's just a beautiful sight to see. Welcome back. Just about quarter till 10. More than 5 trillion sold, bought, and traded in the stock market each and every day. And more and more people in their 20s are getting in on the game. In fact, parents are now teaching their preteens and teens the ins and outs of the Dow Jones and NASDAQ. As Erica Hernandez reports, good money management is the first step. Then comes the tricks of the trade. Kids learn reading, writing, arithmetic, and now the ups and downs of investing. I think they should start as soon as they can. I'm 39. I don't even know when I should start. We are actually doing that with our kids right now. My daughter bought stock in the toys that she likes, so she said that was her best investment. So The first steps start with an allowance. The app's Busy Kid allows parents to match chores with your child's age and suggests the allowance amount and the frequency. So what's the rate for cleaning the toilets? Two fifty. Folding laundry is worth four bucks. Pulling weeds, two dollars. Next, have your kids deal with debit and credit cards. Greenlight is an app where parents can pay their children through their bank accounts. Kids can have their own debit cards, get cash back, and even invest their money. The key here: every trade needs a parent's approval. And when they do make money, have them use it for something important. Roth RIAs can be set up for kids of any age with an initial investment of $500 and just an additional $500 investment every year. In 50 years at 5%, they could have $120,000. To spark interest, try setting up a siblings or cousins investment club or your child can start one at school. There they can share ideas and vote on the best moves to make. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Lots to think about. I know. I didn't get paid for chores, though. I, I had a small ounce. Mike, you have allowance growing up, or? Uh, I'd earn money cutting the grass and stuff like that. Yeah, the same house, here. So. Yeah, pretty simple stuff. I got yeah. a job when I was like 14. I don't mm -hmm. know if that's legal or not, but <laughs> <laughs> when I started babysitting when I was 11. Well, that, yeah. that's babysitting. That's, yeah, that's okay. yeah. yeah. But that's go. the. I mean, that's the one you always think about. If you could go back and tell your teenage self something, it's like mm -hmm. save more money. You know, mm -hmm. with three words. But. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, my grandfather always had a phrase for that. I can't look, you know, look back at history. So I don't know if I can say it on the air here. So anyway, <laughs> hi on that hi. note. Hi, Mike. Hi. <laughs> yes, look at the picture. Wow, look at that. <laughs> yes, indeed. So <laughs> uh, interesting caption here, an upside down rainbow. And it looks like it is kind of right in there. And this sometimes happens around the sun, around the moon, because you get a lot of moisture aloft in the atmosphere. And that moisture is in the form of little ice crystals, and they form prisms. And so it can form, just like raindrops can form rainbows, uh, forms little uh, kind of like a little rainbow. And it looks like there's only half of it right there. So yeah, kind of a neat picture. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect shot. We do have a, a nice start this morning. A lot of mid and high clouds hanging around here. 
And uh, yeah, just as we were talking about this in the break, started sneezing. So Mountain Cedar actually went up about uh, well, about 1,200 points from yesterday's reading. We're at 16,270. Mold is on the low side. And it is going to be interesting to see what happens on Saturday with that big front moving on through here. So Sunday's reading will definitely be something we have to watch. Um, and this went up despite the fact we didn't have any big fronts moving through here or anything like that. So um, yeah, it's going to be. We're definitely in the season going to be something to I don't know if look forward to is the word, but yeah, it's going to be coming. All right, we do still have dense fog advisory down along our southeastern counties for uh, roughly the next hour up until 11 o'clock. A little bit of fog around Randolph as well as Pleasanton, New Braunfels. Nothing too thick, but still it's very, very thick off to the east and We've got some mid high level moisture around here as well. This kind of uh, lighter shade of gray. So we'll still keep some of those clouds around throughout the day. Call it partly cloudy skies. But despite that, we're still going to be very, very hot. Now, yesterday we hit 85 degrees and that was a record temperature. Today, the record is 83 going for 80. Yesterday, of course, we dried out and that allowed temperatures to kind of peak right there in the afternoon. Today, we got the humidity coming back in here. So that is going to, I think, keep us right at about 80. It takes a lot more energy to heat up moist air. So despite the fact we won't be hitting records, still going to be talking about heat index later on this afternoon. Stays very humid through tomorrow. Then the humidity drops throughout the day on Saturday. Then the cold air comes in here. And we got some bone dry air and some bone chilling temperatures coming on in for Sunday and especially Monday morning. Monday morning is going to be the coldest, coldest of the uh, season and the first freeze here in town. 75 at noon today, partly cloudy skies and then a high temperature again up to 80 humidity. So heat index. Yep, that'll be something you can take notice of today. Tomorrow we start off at 60 again, more fog, mist, same thing Saturday morning and then drier air throughout the day. Saturday it's going to be breezy. We'll hit a high of 82 and only 53 Sunday after starting off at 35, 29 Monday morning. It's going to be surprising compared to the way it's been lately. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Mike. All right, we have some feel good stories for you this morning. The confetti ready to fly on New Year's Eve, Eve rather, in New York City. The official confetti test was held yesterday at the Hard Rock Cafe Marquee. Come midnight Saturday, one and a half tons of paper will drop in Times Square. Workers also prepared the Waterford Crystal Ball. This year's theme is Gift of Wisdom. In Littleton, Colorado, politics has gone to the dogs. The town has elected two mayors, Kyle Schlatter and Murdoch, a five-year-old basset hound. It wasn't a rough campaign. More than 6,000 votes were cast for the honorary dog mayor who was picked to draw attention to the historic preservation of Littleton. <laughs> He's got the reindeer antlers and the you jacket your ears, for the, you just wanna... And the jacket for the colder Colorado weather. He's got my vote. Yeah, 950, about 66 degrees. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. No word yet if city's planning on changing any New Year's Eve celebrations due to COVID. At last check, city leaders were planning on having an in-person celebration down at Hemisphere Park, event put on by San Antonio Parks Foundation. It will start at 6 o'clock tomorrow evening. Admission is free. If anything changes, though, we will be sure to update you on air and online ASAP. And just a reminder that popping fireworks in the city limits is illegal. It can result in a Class C misdemeanor, which can carry up a fine up to $2,000. So if you see anyone using fireworks rec recklessly, call SAPD's non-emergency line. Not the emergency line. Call that non-emergency line. Unless someone gets injured, that's when you call 911. Michael? All right, Mountain Cedar did go up, and uh, we are uh, going to be interested in seeing what happens after that big front moves through on Saturday. High today of 80. Humidity is going to come back, so it's going to be very humid this afternoon. And then tomorrow morning, we'll have more fog, mist, drizzle, the usual thing. Same thing on Saturday. Very warm and humid for festivities tomorrow night. And then drier air comes in during the day Saturday, and then we are going to have colder air come in here on Sunday. Very cold. Freezing Monday. All right, Chick-fil-A has released a list of their most ordered menu items for 2021 by region of the country. And we're in the Southwest region and we want to give you the top 10 or so. Yeah, so number one is the waffle potato fries, which is actually number one across the board. Yeah, next two soft drinks, Chick-fil-A nuggets, Chick-fil-A sandwiches, finish two, three, and four. And no surprise here, number five, sweet iced tea, actually number five here. 
but not in the other areas. And then behind it was regular lemonade. All right, rounding out the next seven through 11 on the list, hash browns, spicy chicken sandwich, spicy chicken deluxe, then mac and cheese, and finally, in our region, the 11th most ordered, Chick-fil-A chicken mini. I know. We're killing Mike there. here. I'm He's just so really hungry. hungry. There is right a common now. theme, though. Chick-fil-A is making a fortune on waffle potato fries and soft drinks. It is the top one and two items in every region of the country. The other interesting item in the Midwest region, mac and cheese is in the top two. You know, I wasn't a mac and cheese fan of Chick-fil-A. Well, they love comfort food in the Midwest, so I'm not yeah. surprised it's number seven. Where's the nearest Chick-fil-A? Right Hit now. me with two ranch, two oh, honey mustard. Chick-fil-A, you owe us. Where, you owe us big time. Diet lemonade. I need lunch.